Guys, welcome to Real Talk. It's a Wednesday morning. Thank you kindly for joining us. Great to connect with you guys through the I Love Seville Network. Today, a show presenting Keith Smith and Scott Morris, showcasing Keith Smith and, and Scott Morris, I should say. You, the viewer and listener, can offer some perspective. You can influence the dialogue and the topic matter on the program. The show is archived and broadcasted across social media, so we encourage the discussion. We give props to Ross Mortgage for being a part, of, a part of today's show as well. Judah Wickhauer is our director. Judah, if you can uh, go to the studio camera and then a three shot, let's welcome our panel of experts. Fellas, good Wednesday morning. Good morning. Morning, morning everybody. How's everything going today? You know, um, at my age, getting up out of bed and getting your feet on the deck and getting your first bike ride in since the one I did out in Seattle and Portland, I'm feeling good. That's good. If you want to ask about my tush, it's okay. I, no, I asked you about that on Monday. Uh, it looks like recovery has happened for you. It has happened. Recovery has happened. I am back out and about, getting um, ready to train for another one. That's fantastic. Scott Morris, last time we saw you was seven days ago. It was a lively talk show on a Wednesday morning um, this past week. How has the uh, week treated you? Uh, going well, man. Uh, just running around doing all the things, dude. Uh, little kids gearing up for kindergarten and uh my son's about to turn three uh work stuff uh just you know we've got uh, new contracts coming in people were helping just doing all the things how's fantastic your, how's your contact to conversion rate going it's still it's the, it's it's so long you know lags you know it's it's uh, got a lot of people out there especially in that first time buyer uh bucket that uh, they're either having a difficult time finding a property that they're happy with because what they thought four to five hundred thousand dollars bought them three or four years ago it, you know they're just not there we've got some that uh, are well well qualified but they want to be you know they're looking for they're looking for a deal they're looking for like a, a, a walk-in key turn ready uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar property and it's just not what they're a lot of some of his expectations, um, and a lot of it's inventory. Well, I, I mentioned inventory on on because again, Jerry taught me how to do this. I took a picture of uh, you know our market monitor. Uh, we had last seven days going back Monday. We had sixty six uh, homes come on the market. I'm looking at it right now. That number's down to fifty three. So we're going in the wrong direction. Uh, the interesting thing is the pendings are flat. The pendings are. On Monday was 55. Today it's it's 56, and the souls are pretty much flat. Also, 73 on Monday, and today is is 70. So, you know, units are coming off the market. Inventory is dropping. I don't know if we ever got a solution to it. Inventory. I'm I'm, I'm somewhat getting more um, uh, demoralized. Demoralized. That's the word you're looking for. <laughs> I'm looking for. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I'm getting. I'm getting more and more um, concerned that my prediction is going to be right, which is I don't think inventory is going to get better for for many many years to to follow. Okay, let's we'll throw this to you guys. Scotch up in after after this here. It's clear the political capital is not there for new developmental in, in, uh, inventory in Central Virginia. I mean. It's not happening now, Marl. It's not gonna happen. There's nowhere to go in the Charlottesville city. Fluvanna, your boy Fairchild, your both your boys, has said it's not gonna happen on his watch. Unless it's unless it's by right. It's, unless it's by right. That's what he said. Um, where are we gonna get the inventory? Where are we going to find it? How are we got Powell today at what, two o'clock mm -hmm. with uh, another rate hike. Everyone's on the same page here, twenty five bips for this rate hike at two o'clock. The speculation or the expectation, depending on how you, you know, where you gamble, is that Powell is not going to do any more rate hikes for the rest of the year. It seems everybody's saying that. That's what everybody seems to be saying. I even said it. You did? But I'm like, eh, we got, I think they got, they could, I don't know. I, I've, I've, so you're getting off it? I'm, I've, I'm starting to lean into, so here's what, they're going to come out and they're going to tease it and they're going to make everybody think that that is what they're going to do because that's what they, they've got to lean into that because they don't want uh, inflation bouncing back. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen because then they'd be forced to go to seven um, instead of five and a half. And, uh, 
but they're going to come out and say that it's going to be data dependent. But I think that potentially they could go one more. I've, I've long said that they only had one in them, and now I'm like... So you're, you're seeing a potential Q4 rate hike of 25 bips. Yeah. And it's the Q4 rate hike of 24, 25 bips to basically put the lid on the boiling pot of water and keep it from overflowing. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. That is what I'm saying. So, Keith, thoughts on that? that yeah, jump, so... That would jump rates. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I, I, I still believe <clears throat> that may happen... I also believe in the beginning of next year that's going to start getting reversed, right? I really do. Um, and and you know, look, I, I I'm still always been on board with you with the 30-year fixed rate. I think you're going to start seeing it come come back down on it. But let, let's let's talk about that for a second. So the we're at seven plus, right? Plus or minus 30-year mortgage. Let's seven and an eight. But you're still getting phone calls. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but because people still, you know, look. Are people getting more comfortable with interest rates at that point? Are we've kind of turned the, the corner a little bit on that, or are folks? There are people that there have they've come to terms that if this if they want to do the things, whatever the things are, this is what they've got to deal with, and they're open to the opportunity to refinance in the future. And uh, the limited inventory has has. Kept values where they are because people just don't. You, you they're not gonna not people that you know they're gonna get divorced. They're gonna do the things that people do that create real estate transactions. And as we go into, uh, you know, I've got people who are reaching out for refinances uh, with rates that they just didn't think that they would expose themselves to because they've got different problems to solve. As long as people have problems the rate doesn't matter to an extent. It certainly is a large part of what has people trapped in their homes at the moment uh, that's causing the inventory problem that we have. And what I mean by that is people can't qualify for the same amount of value or, or they can't qualify for the same house because that house has accelerated in value and rates are double what they were when they purchased three years ago. So you're just expanding, compounding. So they can't transition, but they can, you know, they can take some money out. They can pay off bills. Uh, Taylor Averett was just on NBC 29 talking about how people are locked into their homes. I think 20, NBC 29 didn't do a great job of explaining or kind of editing that to, to show what he was talking it's about. because got like 10 seconds. I went yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's it a 15 like, second clip. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad yeah, for the and, legacy media. Yeah, and the... Uh, and how can you explain this in 15 seconds? Yeah, yeah, we, we do it an hour and a half. We've been doing it an hour and, and a half for and whoever, years and, and still can't explain. figure it out. And the anchor out. was... Go, it may be us though, goes, Jerry. Let's, Jerry, let's, it could be us. Let's listen to Taylor talk about the lock-in effect and it's not even exactly... Anyways, the whole thing with... You know, he did a great job. They, they, they could have edited that a little better. Um, <laughs> but I look on all these, uh, like these, these private groups and message boards, and there's like people who are just waking up to this thought. They're like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be like this until rates come down. It's like, duh. Like I've been like standing on top of a mountain like screaming it. And, uh, you know. So, so Jerry and I got into a debate on Monday about this um, because th this – and we talked about this years ago or when the 3% happened that, hey, don't get used to it on the show. This isn't a good thing, right? You know, and, and, and look, and lo and behold, that's where we're at right now. But the reality of it is there's this fear from the sellers because I'm seeing it. We're, we're, act, you know, we're actively communicating with folks trying to sell and list their homes because they have to, right? Uh, divorces. Uh, job relocations, downsizing, they are moving and they, they feel trapped. This is what I think what you're talking about. They're trapped by the 3%. It was really cool at the time. It was really cool at what's going on. So he and I are going to debate about I don't this. Think th I don't think that's the case. Well, I, all I can tell you is what I'm being told. Yeah. yeah. Right? They, they feel trapped because of what you just outlined because, oh, God, I need to move to a bigger house. I can't afford it because it, it's raised up. And, oh, by the way, I can't afford it because it's at 7% instead of 3%. So now they feel trapped. And, oh, by the way, they're looking at renovations and stuff like that, which is ISC is the perfect folks, service company. Uh, perfect folks to call on. Nicely done, Keith. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
I've learned a little bit. <laughs> I'll, throw the, okay, a little bit. I'll throw this to you guys. I'll get out of the way. Yeah, Scott gonna Thorpe, I'm going to I'm gonna mention your comment, Scott Thorpe, and Vinny Reddy on Instagram. I'm going to mention your DM here in a matter of moments. I want to highlight some folks watching, including Jeremy Rowe, hey, Bonnie Jeremy. Murray, Bob Yarborough, Laura Fawner, Bill McChesney, Bellamy Brown, Michael Pruitt. Hello, Marie. Jamie Turner, Woody Fincham, Georgia Gilmer, Chad Wood, Jeffrey Fogel, Neil Williamson, Thomas Leroy, just to name a few. Here's the comment from Scott Thorpe, who is a commercial real estate broker. He says, you guys talk on your network and on your shows that when rates drop to this 4 to 5%, 5.5% range, that it's going to jumpstart inventory and get more inventory on the market because those of us that secured like a 2.75% mortgage, we will feel more compelled to list our house. Scott Thorpe predicts this, commercial broker. What could actually happen is the folks that have the massive stacks of equity from a 2.75% mortgage and then saw their house appreciate 30 to 40% in value, that those folks are in a financial position that is way better than any other housing cycle over the last couple generations. And he predicts that these folks, us, are going to rent our homes. And we're gonna rent our homes at price points each month that are 2x what our overhead is for those homes. And then we're gonna take- At the 3%. The, at, at the 2.75%, oh, the 2.25%. Yeah, agreed. So 100%. he's saying the rent delta is so large right now with our personal residences that you can get 2x the rent. Yeah. And then these folks are gonna scoop up so more inventory. So they're gonna be, not opening the flood of inventory is his prediction. Now listen to this one from an economist so I, I, at UVA I, that was thrown to me, okay? This is a DM from an economist at UVA. Um, what if the folks sitting on paid mortgages choose to buy more houses when the interest rates fall instead of what you predicted, Jerry, of it at opening more inventory? So here you have an economist and a commercial broker saying thinking, the same thing. Saying the same thing. So let's pick the commercial broker report. Yeah. Scott, right? So I own a home. We're doing a case study. Yeah. I own a home. I paid four hundred. I'm picking a number. I paid four hundred thousand dollars for it, right? I put twenty percent down, or whatever the heck I did on all that stuff, and I've got a three percent mortgage on that. And now I want to buy a new home. What does that look like for me? What do I got to do? Will there be people who do that to operate in that model? Yes. Will it be huge? No. Twenty percent. No. Mm. Because why do I have like to... Ten percent. So I have to have... You just, got, you just got taking the human element away from this. Look, I don't mean this in like a negative Nancy or a mean way. I'm not being a big meanie, but people are dumb. Um, they don't operate in their best interest most of the time. They make emotional-based decisions and about rationalize it after the fact. I No, I mean, no, you know, the, it's just... Stop it. Like, that's not how people operate. They're going to do... They'll make a choice, and a lot of that choice is not driven by well-guided, yeah, strategic impulse decision making. It's impulse decision making. Yeah, yeah. And I give you that. Yeah, there'll be a ten percent of the of those people will want to be a landlord, and they'll have a plan, and they'll be driven to do this, and they are already off better financially than uh, eighty percent of the other uh, of the population. But your bulk of those people who are in those mortgages and in those situations are going to run up debt. They're going to need to clear the debt. They're going to, they don't want to be landlords. They don't understand how it works. When you tell them how it works, they still won't get it. They'll sell the house. They'll move on to the next thing. Like that. hundred percent. I think a majority of the people that, will there be a percentage of people that do that? Absolutely there will be. These are going to be sophisticated buyers, sophisticated sellers. They're going to understand. Sitting on more wealth. They're going to understand. Than the, the, few the, housing cycles have sat And on. I have said new, over and over but again, don't as there, rates fall, the most competitive price point is going to be the low end yeah. where people who can or want to become investors are going to be competing against the first time home but buyer. That's what the economists and Scott Thorpe okay, okay, just Okay, so just what these two gentlemen are talking about here over there. What do I have to do? I, my LTV, my, my, de my debt to income has to support two houses. Not well, necessarily. Kind of. Not oh, necessarily. Okay, look, pick that apart. So you're going to you can qualify for 75 percent of uh, you can of the rental income into the next property. Um, 
Seventy-five percent for for the investment purchase, um, but we're assuming that the house is paid off. Maybe they refi. Uh, they, well, I'm not assuming the house is. No, no, paid no. Off. I think I think here's the here's what I think the the model is. I think there's, is. A, there's a net. Hit. I think that's what it is. Yeah. I think here the model is, and for the sake of easy numbers, let's just use the million dollar number. Okay. okay wh why don't we use that? Would make it easy. It's a lot of zeros. Number. All right. Why don't we make it the, the let's million is easier for me. Tens here. So you do is a million dollar number. You owe maybe three to 400K, your home massively appreciated in value, 30%. So that means someone's jumping in at a 700 clip, 700K clip, put 20% down at that 700K clip. You're looking at a, a delta of what you owe the bank and what your home is valued at of six, $700,000. You could utilize that if you wanted to. So and I, you get the Do you know what the income the has to be for the are individual? We renting, to are we talking about renting? Are we going to turn? Is, well, he's is, about to tell us. Are we talking? Now, my, here's my question. I would have done the hundred thousand a lot easier. Smaller number for smaller brain. Are we talking about? We're going to turn the old primary into the rental. The primary turns into so, the rental. So yeah. Glenmore is going to yeah. become a rental community. Not saying Glenmore. I'm saying Glenmore. How about Lake Monticello? Lake Monticello is, is already and a has been community. a rental community for the last 20 years. So maybe that's a better example. Someone bought. Well, I rented a home. in '87, so since '87. Okay. <laughs> Someone who bought a home at the beginning of COVID at Lake Monticello for 250k. That happened all the time, yep. all day, every day. The, that the, home is now four and change. Let, let's call it. Let's make math simple. Let's call they bought it at 200. It's worth 300 now. Let's just figure okay. they got 100 that's, grand. I think that's conservative. Uh, we're going to be conservative here. Okay. And they're monthly not on a $200,000 house when at the beginning of COVID at 2.75 percent. What is that monthly? Yeah, but like that, 800, 900 dollars. 1200 dollars. 1200. 1200. 1200. Yeah, let's let's. But say Jerry, let's, that let's, buyer who's buying the home for 200 to 300 thousand dollars isn't making enough. Income to support two houses. They're they're the firemen. They're the, the the policemen. They're all. You've got to have enough residual capital to go ahead and go and buy that. I, I just don't see that, them. Man. Do you? You think he can't use the loan? So well, I'm, I'm. They can, but there's not enough people who are going to do it. Yeah. There are. They're just not okay. in a, a financial place where they they can't. Well, they're if too they, busy let's raising say, let's, right, let's say they are, and yeah. let's say they're. Uh, uh, a state trooper, or they work for they work for the state. Their their money's their retirement money's trapped in VRS, the Virginia Retirement System. They can't pull those funds uh, to execute in a real estate transaction. Uh, so while they have some retirement, it's locked up. The equity is in the house. I'm not. I'm saying there will be a percentage of people, a smaller percent uh, percentage than than what is being kind of driven home here. Uh, that do this. And absolutely, those people and then the people who want to become real estate investors and the people who already are real estate investors will be competing for lower price point homes against the first time home buyer. I've been saying that. You but, have been. But there is the, the people who need to capitalize on their equity are going to use those funds to transition into another house, pay off debt, and downsize. They're not going to, they're not going to be gobbling up all the the real estate so we got comments coming in so if you quick, want to get on back on primary reason for purchasing homes this is verse this is from nars 2023 report national yeah. association of realtors so it's 137 pages but there's one slide in there primary reasons for purchasing home just to put a button uh, a button in that there's 20 reasons top one two three four five desire to own a home desire to be closer to family retirement desire for a home in a better area desire for a change in family status marriage birth child divorce so that's the top five the bottom one on 20 is financial security uh -huh. so the to scott's point people move because of these particular reasons and while you ask the question i'm going to look at top reason for people to sell uh diana banks thank you for watching the program john blair thank you for watching the show jason howard on rio road um he makes the comment um, we plan to rent our current home once we build our forever home. The next door neighbors rented their current home before moving last year, and they were getting 3x their mortgage payment. Um, th this comment is present. Um, this comment has come in from Grayson, who's watching in North Downtown. Why would someone sell a house that has a financing instrument of under 3% tied to it? This has come from Woody Fincham. He agrees with Scott. It's a different opinion. 
I agree with Scott. We are still doing refinances where many folks are paying off debt for lifestyle decisions and not building wealth. That's what Scott has said. This comment is coming on Spotify. Why would we sell our house if our interest rate is at a rate that we will never see again during our lives? Uh, I had an interesting conversation with... Michelle uh, Sneed has also got a comment. With Susan Real with Ally Property yeah. Management. She's starting... Partner to, of the show? Partner of the show. Yeah. She's starting to see some of what, what we're in the industry as mom and pop rentals, people that just have one, uh -huh. starting to put, we talked about this on the show earlier, starting to think about putting their houses on the market because they never put enough money aside for HAC, roofs, and all that stuff. It's not a huge number, but it's, it's a couple. But it happens, that, yeah. and as soon as somebody becomes a landlord and they have to deal with a major housing expense in the investment property, they go, do I even really want to be doing this? And the money that, and I get the, 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 I, the dream is big, baby, and I think anybody who has the will and want to do it, we can go help execute, but it's not for everybody. And if you can do it, it's, it's freaking genius, right? Um, you know, and you get Suzanne to, to, to manage it for you. I don't even know I have the one rental I have on it. She um, manages the condo for us. And, uh, you know, it works. But that's when you need back to trusted advisors. That's we get in a situation where you get the, the wrong uh, group of people in government and all of a sudden you've got uh, renters who don't have to pay you. You you might you might change your uh, and you or you get the wrong tenant one time. Man, I, I tell to you what. People all the time who 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 got into something and then they got out of it because it wasn't what they thought it would be. And that doesn't happen with just owning real estate. That happens with people who choose professions and jobs and sports and activities and hobbies all of the time. And each time one of these things happen, a set of golf clubs goes up for sale. Uh, somebody, Peloton. Peloton. Somebody's ready to get rid of rackets at the club. Whatever you're, you know, this stuff happens. And this is part of what makes us human and creates all of these transactions in life. Man. And, Talk about that. Yvonne turned me on to Facebook Marketplace. I, I didn't even know this that it existed. Oh, yeah. Uh, on Saturday and Sunday, I'm going with my trailer and my is truck, this, and we're like furnishing still, a this, whole house. Is this item still available? I, no. I don't know. All I know is I was told no, to show like up the, with the truck and the trailer. Uh, <laughs> Michelle Schneid, Schneid, she says, it's such an unusual climate. Usually history repeats itself, but I don't think it will repeat itself in this situation. I think it's a situation we've never seen before. Michelle, spot on. That's what I've been saying forever. This is this 3% has put a factor in the market that I haven't seen since 1980, well, 87. This is what happens when the government intervenes with uh, the free enterprise. And I just knew free market. when it happened that it wasn't a good thing. I couldn't figure out what was gonna be the problem, but you know that's just too low. Primary reasons for selling a home, want to move closer to friends and family, retirement, neighborhoods less desirable, house too small, change family situation, marriage, divorce. Bob Yarborough, the king large. of the Redfields neighborhood, is watching. He says, I'm feeling Scott's surliness right now. This is a funky market for sure. Bob Yarborough watching. Think about this. For the people who, who would be moving, let's say you're moving to Florida and you have a house here and you don't because you, all your family's in Florida, or whatever the state is, the chances of you retaining this property as a rental and moving to another state are so low. Even if you can, it, you're not there for it. Most people just aren't going to do that. You also have to factor in an age thing. You hit Out of a, market is a different story than staying yeah, within market, yeah. but I will give you that. You hit a certain age, and you just don't want to take care of stuff. Right, and you just don't want to take care of a second. I had a conversation with a client uh, looking where well, looking to put their house on the market. Don't want to cut grass no more. Right, you know they're about my age, old. How many people want to cut grass at 100 degrees in Central Virginia with 80 percent humidity? Anyways, not mo most people in don't. their 70s. Yeah, I'm yeah, just there's, saying. There's not that many uh, that want to do that. Okay, so we we've covered that topic. Um, I see the comments coming in. We'll get to them here in a matter of moments. How about the topic of uh, how quickly, and it's coming on the feed. How quickly will drapes uh, rates drop to that five percent range, then, fellas? I say well, it's a crystal ball. That's what they're I asking. say it starts first quarter um, and, and possibly fourth quarter of this year. Um, it's, it's really dependent upon whether or not they make that final rate hot hike uh, going into the fall, 
what happens with inflation with the the five percent raise in interest the Fed has made in the last twelve months, and kind of where we you know where we land. Julie Ballard, given both you hey, guys Julie. props hey, right Julie. now on the What's program. What's up, Miss? How are you? Um, so Scott, Dinah Banks, how are you? The realtors that are watching, Scotty Mo, Ross Mortgage sees rates dropping in the first quarter. Um, Keith so the, Smith. The question to the realtors that are watching: What do you think that's going to do to your market? What do you think that's going to do to your to your business? Is it going to open up inventory, or is it like with us, with the Economist and some of the other folks are saying that folks are going to kind of kind of pivot and buy a second house and keep their rental? It'd be really interesting. But it, this is uncharted. I mean, there's no. I I can't create a chart for this. Right, because there's no historical data. I kind of got a, a chuckle out go of it, against. but uh, so it's earnings season in the corporate world, and uh, Whirlpool's CEO came out and said they are well positioned to take advantage of rising inventory in the housing market. It was in their earnings statement, um, uh, as far as uh, what they were doing with the business, and it's like that's great that that you've got this manufacturing output that you're prepared for, but what, what are we going to do exactly to get there is the question. Who's going to buy them? That's what, well, that's what I'm saying. But who's who's going to buy them? Look, it, it, it's, um, it, it's at one point in time we banned the word and we decided we can't ban I mean, it anymore. How can we ban it? We, yeah. can't, we can't ban it's it. It's the number one factor right now. Yeah, I mean, and, it, and it's multiple factors to, 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 that kind of gets there. I'm just... The more in depth I go with the local jurisdictions about projects that are coming up, new construction projects coming up, the more Debbie Downer I'm becoming that that the likelihood of any new substantially large projects or an increase in new construction, I, I, I'm unfortunate, I'm, I'm, I'm stuttering to say it. I want it to be true that we're going to be able to come up with a solution and new projects are going to work, but it's just not going to happen. You're not going to the the. But we've known this. Yeah, I know, we've I know, I know, this. I know, I know. But I'm just, um, I've been well, a little. There's a reason Ann Malik is going to get elected to her fifth term. That's 20 straight years of yeah. managing a, an Almore County budget. Well, it's also hard to unseat a, 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 a incumbent that that entrenched. Five terms. Yeah, entrenched, entrenched. Uh, but yeah, I just you know, I'm, 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 on one hand, I'm super excited about the market because I know in order to get transactions to happen and help people buy and sell, you need skills, you need you need a Ross Mortgage, you need a Scott Morris, you need people on our partner tab on Real Talk with Keith Smith. You need these folks to make it happen. It requires skill to do it. But emotionally, you know, when you're when you're talking to buyers and sellers and sellers don't want to sell because they're frightened, right? They're scared. They're frightened. I mean, that's what they're at. They're frightened to sell. I don't think are they scared to sell? Oh, they are. are they scared to sell or are they just concerned that they're not going to have something to buy? I, th that's well, a very so that's a fear. Feeling. That's a fear. They're, 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 I don't think that's fear. Okay. I, think that's, I think that's being I astute. Sit at, I, I sit at enough kitchen tables to, 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 and student of body language to know. Isn't that called being astute and knowing where the market is doing? Well, basically what Scott Morris is saying is if I sell but my I gotta move. crib. I, I got to move. I got to move. I have to move. We're, we're, we're discounting those folks. We well, know but, that but, those but, people but that have to move will move. But you can't discount them, Jerry, because that's the largest percentage of people who have to move. Yeah, we're, and we're, not, we're not saying that. We completely agree with you. The what people about, that have to move will move. What about the people who uh, have gone out? And, and this is, I, I find, I'm running into, I, you know, talking to a lot of these lately. Uh, people who've gone out and they've purchased some land and they've got a dream and they want to build a house. Sure. Um, they... I've got some that are just living in trailers on their land because uh, they don't they don't know how to like complete the process. What does that look like for them? Like so, if we know that uh, developments aren't coming along, but people can build can build their own house, um, what does it look like for them getting started in finding a contractor and and building their homestead on their five acres of land somewhere? That's almost as hard as inventory. Right, there's not enough. There's there's a few handful of builders out there that'll do it. You got to finance it, right? Because typically those builders don't have a huge line of credit, 
right? So you've got to figure out how you're going to finance unless you've got a pocket full of pocket full of cash. So you got to figure out how to finance it. You got to figure out what the builder is going to be there. Then you're going to go through the process of. Uh, oh my God, I thought I could afford a 2,000 square foot house, but maybe I'm really only buying a 1,200 square foot house. So all these pieces of the puzzle come together, but it starts with how do I finance it, right? How do I fund it? And can I find a builder who's willing, willing to do it? Now, could they do something like... Uh, and there's no land for sale. Well, I think his example You're saying is, if you already own it? He owns it and he's okay. got a trailer. Okay, right now in Almore County, there's no land for sale. Yeah. I mean, Kerber, our client at Dominion Custom Homes, the developer of Profit Ridge, has, is it three lots left that we're moving? Three? Yeah. Three lots at Profit Ridge? That's about it. Fine, fine in Almoro County right now on the MLS. I, I'm on the MLS every day. A lot that you can build a home on. Yeah. It, it's a finding a, a parcel to build a home on that's not in a subdivision, that isn't laden, laden with HOAs. Right which isn't laden with huge covers or restrictions. Or even even find a parcel of then land. Then you got to get it to Perk. Find then you got to even a parcel of land in Elmore County that is a, is in a subdivision. That's, that's the point I'm like, making. I mean those don't even exist. That, that's the I point. I mean you I'm got making. two in my neighborhood, Elmore County or uh, Fluvanna at Lake Monticello, how many you got left? Yeah. And are they even buildable? Yeah, yeah, it, it depends on who you talk to, you know. I, I That's why we're making this PR push with Profit Ridge here. He may have the most coveted pieces of property, you know, dirt left, parcels left in Almoral County. And you're seeing this shift, right? You're seeing this shift going on where people, if they can't, if they can afford it and can't find an existing home, they're shifting. That's the reason new construction is peaking. To what he's doing. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, comments coming fast and furious. We're going to get to them as much as, as, as quickly as possible. This is a good one from Kevin. Uh, Scott and Keith. Um, and Kevin, I really appreciate this comment. What caused this monumental shift in inventory and your professional opinions? We weren't in this position three or four years ago. Uh, so that would be, we're, we are talking about we're, why there's less inventory. We're talking rates. We cover that. Okay. Yeah. Political capital. So rates. what he's saying is, is uh, in 2019, we didn't have this throttling or governing or pit, governing, meaning a golf cart slowing it down or pinch of inventory is what he's saying. I, I, and we've kind of covered this. Um, two th the rates went down. So people took bought homes and now it's called debt inventory. They don't want to list them. So the second part of that is we got ca it caught up to us that we went from two million just nationwide. We went from building two million new units a year to 10 years of three to 400,000. And it's just been, the snowball has caught up with us because as new construction comes on, it helps relieve the pressure off of existing. Existing inventory increases. Um, I can tell you, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna to have to go ahead and pull up a different slide, but if you can go on Real Talk with Keith Smith on the markets and you can take a look at uh, the uh, car footprint and the volume of sales, because volume and sales and inventory kind of go hand in hand, right? You know, it's in theory. Uh, it, it's hard for us with Paragon because I can't go back and look at 2019 and find out what was active in that week. We don't have the ability to do that. I can look at what's sold on it, but yeah, um, it's all these different factors that are hitting it, and it's. I think it's going to take five or ten years for it to correct itself. Um, Jeff Stees, Stees, um, I believe, is an architect watching the program. Said that uh, Jerry, I'm meeting with the new client tomorrow. She bought two lots out on Pounding Creek Road. Um, so he highlights that there is activity happening here in the uh, in the market. Um, this is an intriguing question that's come in. Um, Jerry, I just looked at the MLS, and you're right, there are no lots that you could conceivably build on. Where does Keith think the new building and new construction will happening, not developments, but just onesies and twosies? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the buy rights will allow you to do that in all the jurisdictions, and you will see onesies and twosies, and we can take a look at that a little, a little bit later. A lot of it is going to depend on Scott's side of the house. How do you fund it? Right. Was the financing for new construction tightening considerably? No. Um, the financing, like, 
qualifications aren't haven't changed. Um, you know, I, we're finding there's some quirky stuff that's that's probably coming uh, for self-employed borrowers with uh, verification of employment and confirming their businesses should operate, things of that nature. But nothing nothing significant is happening on that front. Um, I'm more in line to to talk about uh, kind of how did we get in this position. Uh, when we look at uh, Virginia in the last 20 years, we've gone up from a state population of 6 million to 8.5 million. Um, and we're not seeing that same. We're, what we're talking about is those areas are primarily going to be Virginia Beach, Northern Virginia, and then Central Virginia uh, from Richmond, Charlottesville, those areas. And they haven't been able to support the level of population growth with units available. And that's what we're suffering through. Um, and that's part of the, the, the new construction problem. We, you know, the local jurisdictions don't have the uh, support uh, for that growth in schools and fire and police and, and emergency services. So that's where we are. So what amazes me is the fact that there's not land in Albemarle for people to independently build on. Um, you know, so where do they, where do they look? Where do we go for growth from here? Um, is it uh, is it Goochland? Is it are the, are these more rural counties who still don't have that infrastructure available uh, to support the growth, but they've got the land? What's what is the next step? So, good question. Yeah, so it's all those things. It's also the political will. I think that's the first step. That's the real thing. So, you know, look, I've, I've talked about this for a while. Um, you know, Green County is going to see the next biggest growth, and then it's going to hit a brick wall. And it's starting to hit that brick wall already, right? Because, you know, there's going to be this mass of X number of new construction units. There's going to be the not the political capital to go ahead and approve any more projects. You'll end up doing some buy rights, and buy rights are anywhere from one to five right units per thing and you know you, you might see some of that it, it's just not going to move the needle substantially there's all these little things that'll happen right interest rates will drop a little bit right we might see a couple new construction units come on it and the needle might move a little bit but unless there is a concerted effort from the political side of the house to go ahead and really increase um density or increase uh, housing we're we're going to be at this this region but with here. an increase in density specifically like with what they're doing in charlottesville isn't that just creating more apartment buildings and it's not creating no, not really most uh, uh, i can't remember the exact percentage of it but almost it's just making the zoning more flexible so the land owner and the the house owner property owner has more options with what they can do it's like 60 to 8 i can't remember the exact number but it's between 60 to 80 percent of it is single family detached which allows you to do x number of units in it the apartment complex the multi-family thing there's not a huge swath of the of the map of the flum that allows you to do that on it on it so where the majority of it is is single family and you're i, I just came back from seattle you're not going to see a lot of it they didn't see a lot of it out there you're probably not going to see it, to quote uh, Neil Williamson. He's watching. You'll see onesies and twosies, right? Mayor so if Snook. You were a large, if you were someone who, who had the capital to uh, take on a large project, why would your incentive not to be to build a car apartments and create more renters than it would be um, homeowners? And the, what local government isn't doing anything to support anything outside of that model because that's what i've been saying so the for years so the the ability for somebody the, the pool of the folks that can actually do an apartment complex multi-story it's a whole different you know the 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 fire rate it's a whole different source of construction right it's more of a, a commercial construction the, the folks that can he's do saying this, it's super expensive that's what he's saying it's, yeah. it's yeah. The, the, super yeah. expensive well, the, the 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 pool of people that can, or companies that could do that. Now, converting. But we've already said that there's not enough land to support the local small builder or the mid-sized builder. So if they've got no incentive to operate inside of that territory, the only people who have focus would be people who can. With deep pockets. Yeah, and that and that's who's doing it now, and that's what will continue to Take do. Take a step it. further. So what's that going to the market? It's going to continue. It's going to create more. 
Glenmore is not going to turn into a rental because the people who own the house and could take the next step don't have a Farmington to move into. It's just going to continue to lock up inventory and it's going to push people. It's going to, it's going to create a migration. There will have to be... Uh, Louise has been more flexible than Fluvanna when it comes to growth. Uh, that's a change that will, in, brother. Okay. Um, Unfortunately. It will push people from that north-south 29 corridor, more east and west on 64, your Stanton, your Waynesboro, your uh, Goochland, Louisa, Powhatan will become your sources of growth for inventory. That's where the land is. The municipalities will have to get on board as that continues to happen because somebody will. Somebody will, will take advantage of it. Yeah, and, and you know I know this world well, and, and you're 100% right on that end of it. Green County is kind of the new bubble right now, right? That's going to fade out. Michelle oh. called Green County is the new Lake Monticello. In a lot of ways, yes. Yeah, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit its saturation point here pretty quickly, I think. Um, and then you're 100 percent right, and, and so it, it it goes to the path of least resistance, right? It goes to where it's available, where the rules are, uh, that work, where there's a ready, willing, and able property owner, because that's where it starts. To quote Neil, to sell a piece of property, and then you got to work through the system. And this this you know other and we than we know that that's a six year runway. Jeff says on Twitter DM, and I have another client building on a lot overlooking the James River, two miles south of Scottsville and Buckingham. However, the problem is finding an affordable builder who will go out that far to build the home. How are you going to finance it? If it's cash, great. How are you going to finance it? And who are you going to get to build it? Oh, by the way, when I'm the builder, not only does Jerry have to qualify, I got to qualify as the builder because you're going to end up paying me. A lot of people don't know that. You're going to end up be paying me. So it's two people that have two entities that have to qualify for that if you're doing a construction perm, right, on that end of it. So there's, there's a construction loan that converts to permanent. Am I doing this right? Yeah. And the, other, the, the main thing in finding a builder is uh, what a lender's looking for, somebody who... Uh, it's not just somebody with a license. They want to see a history of completed projects. Yeah. Um, because if, just because they've, they're, they're a class A builder, and they, but if they've never built a home before and they can't show a history of completion, it doesn't scream good faith that they're going to get this one done. So when you were working for me, us, mm -hmm. the way I used to do it is I had a 10 to $20 million line of credit. And I would just build the house on Jerry's lot. But here was the catch. You signed the property over to me, right? So I owned everything. The Until lender, you paid. The lender wanted, wanted that to happen. We, then, then it becomes a normal loan for, for Scott, right? You're not doing a construction firm. We, we, we do the, we, you know, Woody does the appraisal off of the plans, yada, yada, yada. You end up a thing. When we're done. I hand you a set of keys you hand me a check you don't hand me a check i turn around and sell the house to somebody else so yeah i do that with there's uh there's several very few people do that anymore because you can't get that well and anymore. a lot of local builders don't have a 10 million dollar uh, line of credit well, i'm saying they're... you can't get them anymore that's they're... what i'm saying okay. so yeah. jefferson home builders and culpepper is one um they have just the back end capital they don't it's not even a line of credit they've they've got they use their own cash yeah and uh they do it because they don't want to deal with the uh, waiting on draws from a bank yep. they'll, they'll build the house if you own the land they take it lean they take a uh pre-approval from me that uh they consider as a loan commitment they build the house you buy the house at the end but you you uh, can count that on less than one hand i do it with uh some the, the manufactured home companies yep. clayton is one where uh i will send them uh, a loan that's commitment. a different world uh, I'll send them a loan commitment. They'll buy the land from you after they've reviewed the loan commitment, uh, and then place the house, put the do this the well septic foundation, place the home, and then you buy it turnkey at the end. And and that may be a a little bit of a solution here. It is. It's right? people are still um, you know uh, surprised at how much that costs, but. Uh, it, if, it, if you're looking for a deal, that's not the case. Yeah. But, at the but same it gets time, you done, though. It gets it, you to it gets you to an does. ownership. It gets you into into a home, and and it and it works. And there's you know very limited selections and so forth and so on. But, but I'm also amazed at the appraised value. So you know when you're talking about uh, 
a manufactured home on five acres that appraises at three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you know, it's a new world, baby. It's three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. Woody Fincham says to Jeff, Jeff, you're watching on Twitter. Woody is responding to you on I Love Seville um, Instagram or I Love Seville Facebook group. He said tradespeople are much more expensive these days, and that's why the cost of construction has gone up so much. Also, land, dirt itself, because it's so finite and uh, supply is so tight when it comes to land acquisition, has gotten quite uh, more expensive over the last three to four years. I mean, you're buying a piece of dirt that's buildable in Albemarle County. I mean, an acre, a quarter million dollars easy. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's probably light yeah, uh, say, for the say. few that are left. That's probably light. I'd say a quarter million dollars for a half acre. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I mean, and, and find a half acre in Amar County. Well, you can't you because... Can't. You got well, maybe one, two? That well, the, is my... Well, the problem, the problem like with that... I'm blown away by that. Less, the problem less with that from. is because it, you've got to really be about two acres because when you start less than that, you need then you need central water and sewer. Right, so... that's that, And that's the position I'm trying to suggest yeah. to uh, the client here with uh, three lots that are a couple acres and change, ready to rock and roll, already subdivided, locked and loaded, some you know site work done. Yep. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but but just to point that out, if you if you're on a less than two acre lot, it's really 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 hard. I mean, and you can't even find it. I'm look. I mean, it's really hard to practically put a thing. It's back to the to the upzoning in the city of Charlottesville, right? The, the, in order to hit the requirements to make to turn a single family detached lot into four or five units, it's just extremely difficult. I've got a client, seven clients that were looking at property to do that, and we have not been able to find anything that actually meets the four corners of what they're going to what we think they're going to approve, because the math just doesn't work. Right? Um, Scott Morris um, and Keith Smith are crushing it. Scott Thorpe, the commercial broker, has got a comment. Hey. He says, one of the huge losses caused by 2008 is the number of independent small builders. Oh, well, the ones that do four to 15 houses per year in our area. That um, loss of those builders coincided with the large mass builders arriving in our area. And I can that speak pretty to that. much crushed the small builder. And now we need the small builder more than ever because all the projects that we have left, Scott, you made the program better throughout the whole day. The projects we have left are small builder projects and the small builders well, are gone uh, uh, yes and no uh, it, 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 it's there's two things out there you, the the stanley martin's one of our great sponsors, love stanley here, yeah. sponsors here will continue to, to to work on big projects because they have the ability to do that they have the runway to do it in time and they will continue to do that we're talking the, the onesies the, and twosies the, no, it's an immediate need right so the immediate need is hard, is the small to medium builder and and whoever commented on it's a thousand percent right. I got caught up in that. I'm, Scott, I'm, work. I'm Scott. I'm an exact. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what happened. We were a small to medium builder, lost seventeen million dollars, and and we never came back, and wasn't going to come back uh, to it. Uh, and all these other small builders never came back. Uh, and and then you have the 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 large, the medium to large guys and or gals and. That's it. Sloan's watching in Richmond, and she says, to Jerry's point, our home right now can rent for nearly 5000 yeah. and our monthly nut on our home with utilities is 32 Yeah. Um, and if that math works for you and, and, and you can manage it and buy another piece of property, God bless you. That's, I mean, that's what Yona and I do. We, at one point in time at Lake Monticello, we had 14 rentals. And we used to only rent them out to JAG Smart. folks. Smart. And then we missed the cycle and then got non-JAG folks in there. Mm. And then that's exactly what happened. And we, and we were very lucky, knock for Micah. Uh, 2003, 2004, we sold everything because we just didn't want to deal with the headaches because we didn't have Suzanne Real in our life at that point. Uh, and got out and was lucky to get out and happy to get out of it at that particular time. Well, if you look at, uh, I think, the travel nurse, they've got like a Yeah, thing that's changing, that, by the uh, way. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've kind of moved their their whole prospecting out of Charlottesville, and they're trying to put people over in the valley. Yeah, yeah the, the travel nurse wants a very hot uh, tenant commodity. It's, the, the market has shifted. Big time. 
Uh, the likelihood of getting the travel nurse and the high dollar rent that comes with the travel nurse is, is evaporating in this Very market. quickly. If you're Very a travel quickly. nurse that's out there and wants to buy a home, please reach out to me because I understand <laughs> your complicated income. There you, well, Seth's got Morris. Good for the, you. The travel high nurse five, man. makes a boatload of money. Yeah. Um, comments, put them in the feed. We will relay them live on air. Bill McChesney and Nicholas Erpy giving Keith and Scott Morris some props right now. Sarah Hill Buchensky, hello. Lisa Costello, JJ Bean, hello. Lauren and Keswick, hello. Vanessa Parkhill, hello, and welcome to the program. Dr. John, hello. Brent Lillard, hello. Tracy Green, hello, and welcome to the show. Jim Wickower, watching the program over there, the real estate investor himself. Johnny Snow, biceps getting huge over there. You're putting the work and you're getting the gains, John Snow. Love when you watch the program. What of Ross Mortgage's finest? Keith Smith, Johnny Ornalis watching the program. Hey, Johnny, brother. Um, Neil Williamson, the Goldilocks effect on the Free Enterprise Forum. He says, convert the commercial in Albemarle County to residential, and that solves the density or the uh, inventory crisis we're in now. If it were only that simple. Um, That's what so, Keith said on Monday. So, a Charlottesville actually doesn't have it that bad when it comes to that. I think there's probably more opportunity than here than there are most places. But if you look like at Richmond or any place, any city, any any city that has the glass buildings, any city that has uh, some of the uh, building structure and standard that went into creating those commercial spaces, it's going to be extremely costly to try to even try to convert them into residential units he would demolish them he's got a call to action neil williamson on the free enterprise then it, forum. Then it, then it doesn't well i mean listen on monday he said yeah. first the call to action from neil williamson on the um free enterprise forum it's called albemarle tear down this wall uh he's got a ronald reagan reference a cold oh, war Lord. speech reference Could a mikhail like gorbachev tear, tear down this red tape a Mikhail Gorbachev reference, um, and Neil's very much in favor of the zoning code being tweaked to allow the uh, opportunity to take commercial so let's pick real that estate up. into a residential. So let's pick that apart. I, that's a low-hanging fruit. That's something that the Board of Supervisors could easily do. Now, is it going to make a difference? Is it going to move the needle? That's a different conversation. Well, I mean, he said on Monday that if you wanted to buy Almoral Square... Almaro Square, he predicts the value of Almaro Square, if someone made an offer to the current owners, it would have to be $200 million. At least. If you want to buy Almaro, County, Almaro Square. That's where and the ACAC is. And convert it. No, and then he says, after you buy it for $200 He's million, dollars, you have to tear it down. He's me. He Smith said on Monday, it. it's $200 million to buy it, and then you're going to tear so it down throwing, and have to build from scratch. Uh, so I agree with Neil. Low-hanging fruit. Let's get the zoning changed so it's allowed, right? It, look, if... if Nobody, no, it's going to require two things to move forward. Again, using Neil's own words. Ward number thing, you got to have a ready, willing, and able seller, property yeah. owner. I can assure you that the folks that own Albemarle Square are not going to take something unless it's got a two in front of okay, it. Okay, so, so if they second, get $200 million, the they second, would sell it. The second, That's what you're saying. The second, well, I, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't had the conversation with them. But I, I know well enough to know that that's what the value is going to be because we penciled it out what other properties sold for and so forth and so on. Okay. Woody would know way more. How to, Woody how Fitchum, to pencil, what do you think the market value for, for Almoral Square is right now? But there's no motivation for him to do that. But the second thing that's required is what Neil's talking about. You can, Jerry, I got 200 million, you're ready to sell it. I'm, let's buy it, let's do it. But if the zoning isn't there, allowed to do it, I sure as hell no am not work. going through the zoning, paying $200 million for a piece of property and then spending, you know, half a million or plus to rezone it only to get beat up for six years right i just won't do it it's just he's right you, you need to you need to allow it to happen first then the market can start working but if it doesn't if it's not allowed it it'll never happen ne neil's uh call to action on the free enterprise forum is is very much encouraging the planning commission to make this change yeah. Um, and one of the planning commissioners, Mr. Lonnie Murray, who we have tremendous respect for, is watching the show. Yeah, it's low hanging. While Neil fruit. is watching the show, yeah. and we're talking about this yeah. call to action. Look, it, it, it's it, it's something you can. It, it, that would be uh, um, like a chicken and egg kind of thing, right? You've got to have 
the zoning. So if the zoning is there, then then the, the market folks can start having a conversation. Okay, the zoning is there, the playbook is there. Okay, Mr. Owner of Albemarle Square, what is it going to take? I can start not negotiating. What is it going to take for you to do this? Neil says the ordinance change would allow a portion of a project to convert rather than the entire parcel. Oh, okay. So he's saying to you, you don't necessarily need to buy the entire parcel. Now you have a counter to that, that which makes, I know what your counter is. Tell yeah. us what the counter is. That makes things 10 times more complicated. Right, explain why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a perfect example. Developer, what, what is developer? Control what, everything. Uh, there yeah, you go, right. I know I taught You're you something. You're thinking about this as the businessman that I learned from on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll put it in perspective with a project that a lot of people have developer been talking about. Developer 101, control, control everything. everything. Yeah. University Shopping Center on Ivy Road, next to Ivy Square Shopping Center. Ivy Square Shopping Center, which is the home of Foods of All Nations, sold to the University of Virginia for $20 million. The University Foundation, by all accounts, probably overpaid for this, but they were willing to overpay because their riches all get out, and they, and needed, they needed to control it, and they, and they, and they needed it. They needed to control they it. They wanted to end the negotiations, so they said, we'll give you $20 million in a bag, of, in, in a bag. give us the, the, the buildings. That's and what some happened. lollipops. Give us some lollipops. <laughs> the building, the shopping center right next door to Ivy Square is arguably one of the most coveted shopping centers in is Alvaro where County. Foods Nations is? It's the one next there? to it. Okay. It's a university shopping center. Where so the that's Papa, where, where, where the where, Papa John's is. Where the, uh, um, where the really good um, sushi place used to be. Sushi right? King. Or no, uh, Tokyo Rose. Tokyo, Tokyo Rose. Rose. Okay, Tokyo go. Rose was there. Yeah. The tennis shop, Lou Stevens tennis shop Really good shop tattoo there. shop used to be yeah, there. It used to be a tattoo shop right next to the car wash. Not to know anything about tattoo Here's shops. Here's the problem with the University Shopping Center. It's an HOA commercial yeah. shopping center. Yeah. Hunter Craig, we know that name well, has started buying some units over years. Mm -hmm. Decade plus in that shopping center. And he center. controls the HOA. He does not. Well, when he right gets now is splintered among three yeah. or four owners, and those three or four owners are trying to get control of the HOA and the shopping center because then that's a gold mine. So if but you this ever, this is the point that you made. There's three or four owners in it. As a result, no one's bought it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to close a cash deal. That's a commercial project that has 12 owners in it. And if you see me twitching when I'm walking around, it's because of that. It is hard. Well, I, thought, I mean, you twitch normally. It's very hard. So basically what, Thank we're, you, but what we're saying is doing You're not a, leaving on Friday by any chance, are you? I am leaving on Friday. <laughs> um, doing a portion of the project is more challenging than the whole thing is your point. Yeah. yeah. Look, it, 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 if it, if the call to action and Neil and this can work it through, it's, it's, it's a good thing, right? It's a small bite at the, almost said elephant, small bite at the, uh, at the apple, right? It, it, it's a good thing. But I can tell you from a practical perspective, you want to control it because then it becomes very complicated on how, you know, who controls what and who's got authority over what. It, it just becomes this weird, weird thing. It's much better to own it and control it. And the second rule of of developer 101 is to control everything else around you. He says existing owners could control everything and still convert a portion. Yeah, they could do that. That that. So we were looking at it from an acquisition perspective. The existing thing could they could do that. Uh, I I I, got I know a little bit that. about I know a little bit about the Albemarle County uh, Albemarle um, uh, owner. Uh, come on, the the the, the help me out. We're uh, you gotta give me a little more than that. Yeah, 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 I know, Smith. Hold on a second. Almo Shopping Center. Almo Square. Almo Square. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Um, that owner is more than likely never going to do anything with it. Yeah. There has to be a change of ownership in order for that to happen. Where we're seeing some of this happen. Did I do that okay? Yeah, you did that okay. Is uh, Grace Great Eastern Management with the Seminole Square Shopping Center? Um, that, now they would do something. Well, that's happening. Yeah. A portion of Seminole Square is being converted well, they, to apartments. Yeah, I believe they went through a. Uh, hmm. I believe they went through some sort of rezoning process. Hmm. Is that like a really big money people who are creating more S rental units instead of like that's the thing that I keep going? Yeah. But how many years has that been in the pipe? Oh, long time. But that's what I'm. Saying. Long, long, long time. Long time. It got to be five or six well, years. Well, I mean, how about this? The um, dairy market, front of the program, Chris Henry, yeah. Stony Point, he is doing phase two of the dairy market development. 
on the Fifth Seasons and Rockfish Brewing Company location, and he wants to bring apartments to Charlottesville. This was always the plan. This was always the plan. And part of, of getting approval here is you have to notify the neighborhood, you have yep. to mail, send a notice in the mail, and you have to have a community center meeting. Yep. Yesterday they did the community center meeting at the church that Chris also owns next to Dairy Market. And the community came out by the dozens, if not more, and was vehemently opposed to this. Of course. Although it was always the plan. Sure. This was always the plan. So, so the, here's the point I'm making is, so it's, it's like, it, why do it if you're getting this response? So Scott and I had a text conversation about the apartments at Colonial Circle. In Fluvanna. In Fluvanna County, right? That is what, what's being built has always been the plan. It's been the plan and publicly talked about and out in the public space for six years. None of it's changed. It's always been the plan. But. Now they're building it. When you start going vertical and people can see it, it becomes a very different thing. Yeah. Right? And so there's this whole chatter about that, that it's only apartments. Well, no, it's not. There's 200 single family attached and detached. Homes coming in are 80,000 square feet of commercial. But that takes time to get built. But that's what's happening over there. So you know, here's on the a piece of paper, it looks curious good. curious thing about where they put that. So what are we talking about now? Colonial Circle okay. in Flavana. The most curious thing about where they put that is that it almost in no way is going to benefit the county. Um, so it, the fact that they approved it and allowed it and all the things is shocking to me because no one who lives there is going to shop there. All that money is going to get spent in Charlottesville. But that's the case anyway. I understand, but you could have at least done something like, you know, mixed use. Put something on the opposite side of the lake to where they got to drive past food line instead of go deeper in the county if they're going to choose to go. So, so the reason that part of the reason that's there is the roundabout. So that roundabout uh, got installed because of the property owner gave the property to it. There was a lot of, as you know, there was a lot of deaths. I get it. Deaths at that, at that yeah. intersection. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it 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 went through the process. It got approved. And uh, it's it's getting built. Um, nice well, smile, by the way. <laughs> I got a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of text messages coming in here on what we're talking about. Nice smile. Um, I I love Scott. Eighty eighty eight. I just look at just as you guys were talking. I'm just digging through the 137 pages of it. Eighty eight percent of people between 33 and 42 years old want a single family detached house. Yeah, and anybody who uh, lived through uh, government mandated COVID wants a single family. They, you know, Isn't that everybody? Yeah, well, two percent. <laughs> your point? Yeah, two percent <laughs> only want to live in a duplex apartment condo of two, two to four unit buildings. Michael Guthrie, percent. hello, welcome to the hey, show. Hey, Michael. I'm sorry, I lied to you. It's one percent of that age group, 33. So that's like the prime millennial buying thing. 88% want, that's the highest group, by the way. The lowest group is uh, my age. What do you a make of that? Agent. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, if, I could, if I could get a duplex with a master bedroom, a primary suite on the first floor, and somebody cuts the grass and all that stuff, and I got a place for my boat and my toys, I'm all in. Well, are you, have you guys decided no. that you're going to no, rent stop, your house? Stop, stop. Isn't that what you recently decided? Yeah, so that's what I decided. <laughs> I don't know if Mrs. Smith decided that, but that's what I would do. Johnny, uh, M much like the conversation we've been having, that's exactly what I would do. I've got enough equity in the home. That's my point. Yeah, but but I'm. A but you're saying you're an anomaly and you're not the norm. Yeah, that's what you're saying. I, well, I'm at a certain point in my life, right? Right. It's just two people. We're at. So he's basically saying he's going to rent his house and that's then what buy I want another to do. house. Yona does not want, and I'll probably lose that one. This is what Scott is saying. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I'm, but is there hundreds of thousands of us going to do that? So the answer is no. It's not a huge, huge amount. Do you think, and here's, and here's the other piece I don't of that think puzzle. So. It's not just them saying no. It's their kids saying no. Yeah. Going... Well, why are you going to do that instead of... Whatever? Literally, Yasmina and Yvonne are exactly saying that at the kitchen table. What are they saying? They say, Dad, what are you, nuts? What? Just sell the damn thing, take out the cash, and go buy and live someplace else. And my answer is, is no, I want to retain ownership of it, right? If the equity is going to continue to grow. I find, I've, I've, I've got the fiscal ability to do it, right? And then 
knock on Scott's door and say, here's X amount of dollars. This is what I'm going to buy. Give me a loan. But I'm in a different world. I get that because you're in the game. Well, not only I'm in the game, but I'm at, I'm at that point in my life, right, that I can do that. I can tell you 20 years ago I couldn't do it. I was broke 20 well, years. Well, three or four years ago, it's, it was the COVID effect. And three years, four years, the COVID effect has caused homes to appreciate and, 30 to 50% in value. And Michael Guthrie knows this, and thank you to Michael Guthrie, because we, when we started working with Michael, Roger we, were, the show. we were at zero. I mean, we were like at zero income. So uh, to him and, and everybody over there, they helped us uh, move on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Boys, we're winding down at 1130. Time oh, flies when you're having fun. 1125. Hey, Roger. Um, we, uh, Where in the world are you right now, Roger? He's Roger's always in wandering. Town. Roger's in town. Uh, you sent me a, a, little, going a little low down on um, uh, 100 acres on Piney Mountain. I thought, he was going to, I thought he was going to Canada. He's listening to us right now. Um, some closing thoughts, boys. Anywhere you want to go. Well, let's see what the Fed does today Two and, how, and how it affects things. My take is that they're going to uh, preach a data-dependent forecast going forward and that another rate hike is on the table they do, and I'm leaning more into the fact that they may add one more increase that I thought they did not have in them just to put a lid on the pot, as Jerry said earlier, um, to try to snuff out inflation. The last thing they want is for it to come back and them have to move even further uh, ahead than they expect to go. So let's see what happens there. Uh, it's highly anticipated by me for this afternoon. Say hi so, to Ludwig. Ludwig Kutner, hello. Hey, Ludwig. Uh, good Morgan, my friend. I saw him on a uh, riding a Vespa on High Street today. He's pretty cool. Riding a Vespa on High Street, Ludwig. You look super cool. I did. I was slightly worried about you without the helmet on, but uh, you know more about life than I do, um, and you look you look sharp. On and that he's Vespa. German, so there you go. Yeah. Um, so my closing thing is, I just took a look at what, as in the last three days in the car footprint since Monday. How many units, how many homes are actually sold and closed? It was 26. To, to your point, homes are being bought and sold. So if you're in the market, reach out to Scott, reach out to any one of the realtors that are watching, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to help you through to the trusted advisors. But in the last three days, 34 went pending. So that means people are putting contracts on their houses. That means people are closing houses. Now, only 15 came on the market since Monday which is not a huge number, but, but there are folks that are buying and selling at 7%. You know, it's difficult, but this is when you get trusted advisors to help you cross the table and pull down Real Talk with Keith Smith Partners. There's a bunch of them on there to help you get across the table. One of them in particular sitting to the right of me to make some magic happen, because if you can't get your prequal put together, you're not making a deal happen anyway. I like it. Scott Morris, Ross Mortgage. I'll say it again. Scott Morris of Ross Mortgage. That's who you should reach out to to get to the finish line on a vacation property, a refinancing, or a home purchase. Judah Wickhauer, the director. Keith Smith of Yes Realty Partners. Um, I'll let the Real Talk audience know about this. I am on hiatus at the beach. You are taking a vacation. Until Sunday, August 6th. I'm leaving Friday morning, and the family and I are heading to the beach returning Sunday, August 6th. So Real Talk with Keith Smith. Real Talk is going to have, uh, Keith Smith's going to have carte blanche. Slightly nervous. Slightly Who, nervous me? about that. Not really. No? I'm no, taking, I'm slightly nervous. I'm taking a vacation, too. So I'm I'm just slightly decided nervous. I'm, I'm a, slightly <laughs> nervous. Oh, you don't uh, realize I booked a hotel, I booked a, uh, Airbnb right next to you. No, <laughs> no. Where we're staying, there's no Airbnbs, my friend. Um, Keith, Scott, Judah, and Jerry on Real Talk, archived at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Thank you kindly for joining us. He, I love Steve. You're more Show nervous than I am about this. Uh, no, I'm actually not that nervous. <laughs> I'm super excited. I am too. Um, we will be back on air in one hour. Take care. I'm super happy for you, man. Thank you. You and your Thank family. You. We should get an update.